Welcome to another episode of Silence is Golden, coming live from Melbourne, Australia. I'm Simon Kelly. And I'm Troy Dane. And today we're going to be talking about profit. We're also going to be talking about uh, what's new in the world of Apple. They just released something interesting that really grinds my gears a bit. I'm going to make Troy do some stuff on this machine that may get him stuck. It's um, some AI learning from Google, so that should be fun or it could be a nightmare. <laughs> uh, stay with us. Good morning, Troy. Ah, oh, good morning, Simon. How you going, mate? I'm all right. What, what day is it today? What's going on today? It's Tuesday. It's a public holiday here in Melbourne because a bunch of horses are going to run around a paddock and a bunch of idiots are going to put money on it and get drunk get and... Covered in mud, apparently. Get covered in mud. It's storming today here in Melbourne. It so is that will be absolutely hilarious. absolutely persistently pouring outside. <laughs> that was good. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's good, that's good. Yeah, you can hear um, the water feature in the back. I don't I couldn't... like horse racing. I don't like gambling. We oh. are the world's worst problem gamblers here in Victoria per head of population. I don't like gambling, I don't like horse racing, so mm. I didn't go to the horse race. I'm here at work, working on a public holiday, paying myself time and a half. Yeah. Oh, good for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Doesn't really deserve it, but that's fine. Yeah. Well done. That's just how committed we are to bringing you guys as much uh, horse shit as we can <laughs> in the 30 minute live stream show that we didn't yeah. go to the races that we're Keep here Keep it instead. in the theme of That's horses. Right. Exactly. Here's some horse shit for yep. you to enjoy. I've got a bug up my ass today too, so uh, you know, I'm really, anyway, we'll talk about, we're not doing this pisses me off this week, are well, we? Like, is we're doing what made the week it? come out, hey? Well, oh. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can get oh, you man. nice and frustrated with <laughs> some, uh, some images for you to guess what's been going on in the news, oh, if good. you've been paying okay. attention. Yes. Can we oh, get mate. the first one up? Well, can you roll up what we're going to be doing right now, Max? That'd be great. Hmm, what's happening here? Catch-up time. I didn't ever notice that. Cool. All right. In this game, what we do is we present an image and then we have to decide and we have to figure out what the hell is going on. And we have to figure out what is happening here. So let's take a look. I put this one together so I know what's going on, so I'll be guiding Troy and trying to throw him off and see how he goes. Excellent. <laughs> I didn't know about this one, so... Uh, <laughs> All right. <laughs> awesome. Ben put this one together, well, I mean, which is this, fantastic. This could be the fact that yeah. yesterday mm -hmm. you arrived in the office and you left your your computer charger at home yep. and you were asking someone in the office if they had a USB-C type computer charger, yep, which, which they, they didn't, did not. so you had to walk back home and get yours. Yeah, it's a very specific charger. It, doesn't it could fit be that. Others, which am, is annoying. Am I, am, I, am, I, am I on the money here? Or, no, or you'll need to I'm think not. different. No, not quite yet. Um, I'll give you another crack though. It could be the Recovery fact. Recovery points. It could There's be the this, fact that this is news related, right? That okay. something, some new things happened. Well, was, Apple was, had a keynote, that didn't was they? News related yesterday. The oh. fact that you left your charger at home news or, people was news in our it. office, wasn't it? So it could be. I'm going to hazard a little guess broader, here. Little broader. I'm going to hazard a guess here that um, I actually have a little crumpler bag that I carry around with me with all of my dongles and adapters in it because whenever gotcha. I, when if I'm like I uh, want to plug my computer into an HDMI, mm. I need 13 dongles daisy chained together to make that happen. That's right. So I'm going to hazard a guess that Apple have released a new product. Mm that doesn't have a headphone jack, doesn't have a power charger, uh, doesn't have a camera, and doesn't have a microphone. And that you actually need dongles to connect all of those what things is it, to... a water bottle? Yes, it's is a water thing? bottle that you can connect a camera and a microphone to via USB 3 dongle. Yeah. Um, you have to use a lightning cable to fill up the water bottle. <laughs> and then like you then you have the water bottle with a camera hanging off the end and a microphone here connected via dongles. Yeah. So, I, but is, am I right? Is uh, that correct? No, no, but okay. just on that, my, my mate used to have a really shit phone and he um, sticky taped a lighter to it and, a, and a, like a one of those wind up cameras and a bottle opener. So oh, wow. he had this massive thing, so I'd check out my camera phone. <laughs> so good. Uh, Shout out to Gerard um, with his genius creativity. Uh, let me just think about this for a second. Um, you get one more. I... One more guess. So you're, I pretty, tell you, you're, you're really close. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what did happen. I don't know whether this is related or not, but I'll tell you what did happen is um, the iPhone gimbal. So you have a gimbal that you put an iPhone on. Right. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. 
because you get these beautiful smooth shots on a gimbal and it's like a selfie stick with like built-in destabiliser, right? Yeah, and you get some beautiful nice shots. Problem yeah. is, if you want to plug a little lapel mic like this, Rode do this lovely little Lavalier mic that you can plug straight into your iPhone. Yeah. Unless you're using an iPhone which is 10, of course, which doesn't have a headphone jack, or even I think the iPhone 7 got rid of the, or the iPhone 8, whichever one got rid of the headphone jack. So now you need a dongle mm. to plug in to the, the lightning cable which then has a headphone that you plug your microphone into and then when you stick that in the iPhone gimbal all of a sudden your footage is not so smooth it's a little bit because the weight's different wobbly something. because the weight's different <laughs> because you've got this microphone so you're walking along and you just kind of got to keep doing this while you're presenting your cat your selfie stick yeah 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 so I don't know if that's related at all but no, that's no, something it's, else it's that happened. something else that went down right. no the um yeah you're like I'm giving you partial credit I'll give oh. you a green light for that that's okay. fine the iPads the, the new iPad that came out, they've removed the headphone jack, which is fine, but well, instead it? of, yeah, I think so, okay. instead of doing it using the lightning cable, because like the new iPhones have like the lightning cable for your headphones, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they've decided to use a different connector as well. So now it's USB-C for your headphones. <laughs> so you're gonna have what? Lightning cable to USB-C then to headphones? Like what is this? It's ridiculousness, but you know, whatever. It's that's just the way designed to At least they're coming back to shit, USB. At least they're coming back to USB. I think that's good. USB C. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. Every, like yeah. U universal, right? Like Serial we're all bus. exactly instead of like your proprietary one yeah. that you want to use Apple, you bastards. But you know, fair enough. So there you go. There's partial credit for you. Do you think? Do you think Mr. Jobs would be happy? Um, hey? I, he's, he didn't seem like he was happy. <laughs> Not very happy, Mr. Jobs. Yeah. Not very happy at all. All right. What do we got next? What's next on the list? Oh, I should know who that is, shouldn't I? I honestly don't even know what this one is related to, but let's let's roll with this. Wow, I have no idea. Yeah, right. Who this yeah, is. yeah, yeah. Perry, Perry. That's Perrier water. Somebody yep. drinking Perrier water. Yeah, yeah. Who is that person? <laughs> I have no idea. That is drinking Perrier water. Yeah. Yeah, 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 totally. Oh, I'm all over it. I'm like Max is just signaling to me like Perry Air. Oh, Perry yeah, yeah. Can we just go back to the, what? what well, to got, be honest, this crop. is more useful. This is much more useful. Max is strategically cropping in, so it'll be right. easier for you. Right. Mm. Uh, he is. This person is sniffing the Perry Air. <laughs> Are they? Rather than oh, drinking yeah, it. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yep. have no idea how this is related to anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's related to like just what could it, anything, any topic that it could be related to. And I'll let you know if you're warmer. Did you say air? Yes, closer. Air. Something Perry. related to air. Air. Something yep. related to air. And it's kind of, it looks like it's in a... It's a oh, 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 okay. Oh, right, okay. So I think yep. somebody has released a product which is a can of air. Woo! Well done. A can of air. So Are you kidding me? This is about the business of bottled air. Moses Lamb and Troy Paquette, both Canadian mortgage specialists in their late 20s, um, they're looking for a career change. So they started up a company called um, Vitality Air, I believe is Are what it's called. Are you kidding me? Um, so when, when they started, they, yeah, Canadians, they drove to Banff National Park and they spent an hour in, you know, quote, flailing a plastic bag around trying to catch the mountain breeze. The duo listed the product on eBay, which then sold for 170 US. Um, what? And generated quite a bit of press. 130 US, sorry, generated quite a bit of press. And they, while they, they say they feel bad for the guy, they're like, wow, here's a uh, business opportunity here. So since then, when Vitality first started, they would suck up air with a $400 whatever tool, transport it to their garage and manually transfer it into bottles. Right? And now they use a $65,000 200 litre machine that collects 21 bottles of air per minute. Yeah? Affixed to a two, 20 foot trailer, 12,000 pounds, fully loaded, the air brought uh, to Vitality's new fully automated bottling plant that they sell to polluted parts of the world, such as China. That's what's happening. That's the world that we're living in now, right now. Now, I'm just going to hazard a guess. I'm just going to hazard a guess Crazy. here that. Um, uh, they're not following me on the camera. <laughs> yeah. Why isn't somebody following me on the camera here? Follow just me on the camera. It. Keep at I'm it. I'm just going to hazard a guess here that maybe this is coincidentally happening around about the same time that marijuana has been legalised in Canada. I'm, I mean, I'm not suggesting anything, <laughs> but perhaps, I mean, this is ridiculous. Yeah, that's crazy. This but just, is... just the fact that that's generating a significant wow. amount of revenue for that company, obviously. Insane. What, are there health benefits to breathing in air from like like fresher air from somewhere else? 
um, there was a bit of a uh, like cost the breakdown for some reason using um, Adam Sandler as the as the image here. So how much would it cost to constantly breathe bottled air if it the 16 breaths per minute, uh, two dollars thirty per minute, which would be a million and a half dollars per year. So hang on, one Vitality air canister costs thirty two dollars. That's right, one hundred and sixty breaths. Whoa. Yeah, there you go. I wonder if smokers are buying this. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> One for you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just undo all the hard work. <laughs> wow. Woo. You would be happy. And you and Ray thought you were crazy trying to sell sunsets by subscription. No, no, we, we thought Thailand. we were crazy at the beginning and now we're totally on something. Uh, <laughs> Coming right. soon uh, to a webinar near you will wow. be sunsets by subscription by hey, um, Ray uh, of Sunshine bit and of Simon Sunset Kelly. Shout out to a couple of people watching on uh, Facebook. More Cohen and Carl Godfrey are watching uh, and Egg Bautista puts a love heart in uh, uh, Facebook. Thank you very much. Uh, Hamza is also watching, says it's still Monday here. Brian Swatolsky is watching and Casper Birch Bookberg is also watching. There we Welcome go. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. All right, roll up. What do we got next? Mm. Ooh. What is happening here? That's a Waymo, right? It seems to be. Warmer. <clears throat> Definitely warm. Uh, that is a Waymo driverless car. Mm hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Something news related. It is one of those. Um, it is, <clears throat> uh, hang on, oh, I know about this. Okay, good. We spoke about this recently, didn't we? Uh, uh, no, but there's, so there's been developments. Oh, there have been developments. Mm -hmm. People were freaking out. That usually happens. Because <laughs> Waymo driverless cars were driving around, was it San Francisco or Silicon Valley? Well, yeah, Cali. Yeah, California? Yeah. 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 Uh, let me guess, so, uh, a way, there's been a crash. No. Involving a Waymo driverless car. Not this no. time. No, okay. no, no. No way, Mel. Uh, uh, what about like you, a, a yeah, speeding ticket? Fine. Did a Waymo driverless car no, you, get a speeding ticket? No, it's pretty, you know, it's like it's a development future thinking, like nothing like crazy happened. It's just like, wow, the future is, is coming and it is now legal to X. It's now legal to have sex in the back of a <laughs> Waymo car. <laughs> Yes? <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not illegal. It's not illegal to have sex in the back of a Waymo yeah. driverless car. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not, not illegal. illegal. Well, it's fine. They don't have a sign, so I mean, no know. sex in the in the back. Yeah, yeah. If there's no sign, it's fine, right? No Isn't sex in that the back. The rhyme? You are being monitored on camera. <laughs> yeah. No sex in the back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's now legal <laughs> to. It's now legal to drive a Waymo driverless car without touching the steering wheel. Uh, they have, they've got a permit now for 40 completely driverless and they usually have someone who's like, who's there like, oh, if something goes wrong, they'll yeah. do it. So now they don't have to be in the car anymore. So fully automated, fully driverless and they can drive up to 100 k's an hour Wow. in Cali. Wow. So that's happening now. That is Whoa. crazy and I can't wait. It is wait. the Jetsons are here. Yeah, yeah. Meet so George that's Jetson. Amazing. <laughs> the Jetsons are here. That is fantastic. You're just going to see a car with no one in it. Just like, <laughs> hmm. I wonder where he looks late. <laughs> yeah, I wonder where he's going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, here's the thing about California that freaks me out is whenever I'm in Los Angeles and I'm driving down the freeway, yeah. there are like eight billion cars on the freeway with one person in them. Yeah, yeah. So now there are going to be bad. eight billion cars on the road with no one in them. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. What the? How is this and a good thing? In each other. How is this a good thing for congestion? Get out the way. Yeah. You know? Well, the idea is they have people in them, I think, but right. you know, it could happen. We'll see how we go. Wow. Are they passenger vehicles or courier vehicles? Yeah, passenger. Passenger vehicles. Mm. Yep. Amazing development. It's crazy. Fantastic. Yeah, I, for one, welcome our robot overlords. We do have to get that clip, Max. Cool. All right, last one. Roll it. Ooh. That is a real picture. Just throw it out there. Right. That is a photo. Really? Yeah. That's, that's my clue, and I couldn't help it because that just blows my mind. That's lightning. It is lightning. And is it a volcano? Yes. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, but this is news related, Yeah, right? it's from something that happened recently. So this is the trailer for Ghostbusters <laughs> 5. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what's going on Ghostbusters there? versus Terminator Ghostbusters versus Transformers. versus Aliens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What was that really bad yeah. volcano film? Uh, Dante's Peak. Yeah. My sister thought it said, don't speak. <laughs> don't speak. Yeah. Dante's yeah. Peak. That was a pile of crap, that oh, film. was it? This is don't speak Ghostbusters about it. versus Dante's Peak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I right? <laughs> no. No, it's not. Uh, no, just I, I came across this image and I just thought it was absolutely ridiculous. It's it from the ridiculous. Siena Photography Awards. Uh -huh. It's a yearly culture and nature photo contest. It selects an incredible variety of images at every corner, from every corner of the globe. They had 40,000 photos um, submitted to it. 
from around the world, which is pretty amazing. Right. 150 countries worldwide. 156 wow. countries worldwide. Wow. There you go. There you go. Uh, well, thank you for sharing. And yeah, that was no the winner, worries. was it? Yeah. That was, no, that was the winner of the category... Um, da, 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 da. The Beauty of Nature. The, the Beauty name of, the of category. Nature. Mm. So there you go. There you go. Who won? Who was the photographer? Uh, his name... Well, Francisco Negroni. From Francisco Chile. Negroni from Chile. Yeah, well, it's right. called El... Calbuco was the name of that. Where was the volcano? Do we know? Yeah, of course. Uh, Los Rios in Chile. Los Rios in Chile. Mm. And when was the photo oh, taken? Damn, Do we know? dude, you're all over this. What's your favourite colour? <laughs> um, no idea. No this idea. year. Oh, who knows? And you was got it, me. You got it, me on that was one. It, was, were there cumulus nimbus in the sky when that lightning struck? Do you well, know? well, well, well. It's it says an incredible dirt storm wraps the f fumarole of the erupting volcano. Fumarole, which is um, so I was that lightning? Latin derivative. Yeah, man. Right. What wow. crazy is that? Wow, that, that is, is insane. Nuts. How do yeah. you capture that? So, was oh, there yeah, thunder? Was there thunder at the same time as the lightning? Right. Okay. <clears throat> Fantastic. Yeah. There you go. That's been what's what that was. What's Holy happening shit. here? How did you go points wise there? Uh, I think I got three. Yeah, that's not bad. I think. There's no well official done, scoreboard, so we're just making this up. Well done. Hey, Graham Craig says, bottled air, old idea from the Lorax. What's the Lorax? Not, not sure. Let us something know, out Graham. of Doctor Who. Um, Carl Godfrey says, hey, Is guys. It? Donovan Falke says, hello from, and I'm going to get this wrong. It's either Sweden or Switzerland. I believe it is Sweden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's Canada. It's Canada. Mm -hmm. Donovan says, hello from Canada. <laughs> Sorry, Donovan, I just thought you were Swedish or Swiss, but it turns out you're Canadian. Yeah, it's quite a small, you know. It's a very emoji. small icon of the flag with the clover in the middle. That is definitely the Canadian flag. The maple leaf. The maple leaf. I believe. Not the clover, yeah. the maple leaf. There yeah. we go. All right. The Swedish clover from Canada. <laughs> very good. <laughs> cool. All right. So, I had, by the way, I had not seen any of those images beforehand. I had no That's idea cool. I uh, seen yeah. what they were. So, That's well great. done to Ben and Max for putting that together. Woohoo! Good stuff. So in my travels this week, there were some things that um, I found interesting. One in particular made the Wii come out a little bit. What made the Wii come out? And if we can screen share, that would be amazing. But uh, if we can't, I'm sure Max will tell me. So again, this Wait, is for you. Look out! This is an AI engine from Google. Okay. Right. Yep. And like, we'll just we'll go through the game, and then I'll I'll tell you about it afterwards. Okay. Right? Cool. So when you're ready, sure. Just hit let's draw. Okay. And we might we'll get a little bit of audio because he guesses as you're drawing. Oh. Right, so when you're ready, oh, click okay. the button. Okay. Go for it. Draw snorkel. In under 20 seconds. I just have to draw it on the thing, do That's I? That's right. So you press got it yeah, and, then and then it's just, on. And then draw. That's right. Okay. I see line, or diving board, or foot, or golf club. I see hockey puck. Oh, I know. It's snorkel. Yes! Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Can you hear that? Is that coming through at all? Yeah, turn it up a bit. All right, here we go. All right, here's a robot. Google is going to be telling Troy if he's right or not. Draw a calendar. <clears throat> I see diving board, or pillow, or square. I see map, or postcard, or camera, or envelope. I see bread. I see fireplace. I see window, or gift, or jacket, or cooler, or power outlet. I see picture frame. Sorry, uh, I couldn't get it. That's alright. That's alright. Google you wins that stupid one. robot. <laughs> yeah, you're teaching it now. You're teaching it how to learn. Eyeglasses. I see circle, or blueberry, or moon, or watermelon. I see bracelet, or binoculars. Oh, I know, it's eyeglasses. Yeah! <laughs> this is like Pictionary yeah, yeah. with a robot. We've got, we've got a couple more. Let's smash it out. Okay. Yeah. I see line, or spoon, oh, what was it? or golf club, it was or room, okay. or rake. I see arm. I see marker, or beard, or nail. I see carrot, or magic wand, or elbow, or shovel. I see screwdriver, oh, or on. bracelet, or violin, or giraffe. I see yoga, or arrow. <laughs> yoga? <laughs> that was a, that was a Hang on. for sure. Does that say bondage or bandage? Oh, bandage. Bandage. Oh, holy shit. How do you draw a bandage? Come on. Seriously? <laughs> yep. Just press got it and think later. Bandage. I'm boom. Done. Like a, like I got a, a bandaid. Like just like nothing. a little bandaid. Just like the nothing. long strip. Yep. I got nothing. I see you got this. I see diving board. You see board, diving board all the time. Banner. I see toothpaste or the Great Wall of China. <laughs> you see the Great Wall of China. <laughs> or piano. There we go. Couch, That's a band aid. Wait, wait. Or marker. He's thinking. No, no good. That's right. Sorry, I couldn't. Last one. It. Okay. Megaphone. Whoa. 
I see string bean, or seesaw, <laughs> or diving board. Oh, I know, it's megaphone. Yes! There you go. All right, three from three. That's pretty good. Well, three that from was six. about as much fun as you can have with your pants on. <laughs> It's pretty good, actually. That is like, like Pictionary. I want to yeah. do it on the iPad, though, because it would be easier yeah. with the pencil. That's why we didn't do that. Um, so they've got 50 million other drawings made, and the more that we draw in this, the more the machine is actually learning, and the, the, more, the better it gets at this. And it just it's absolutely incredible that Google have created this, and I, I, w I would guess that this feeds into their map engine as well. So when you're drawing these shapes and guessing things, it's actually using humans for things the AI can't figure out yet. It's just ridiculous. Google's brain is blowing my mind. Here's what's disturbing about this, kids. Google is gamifying and incentivizing us to feed its machine yep. so it can serve more relevant ads to us to sell our shit we don't need, to impress people we don't like with Whoops. money we don't have. Exactly. Hey. Sorry about that, Max. I did a bit of a screen share shift over there. Interrupt, and, yeah. Interrupted my brilliant monologue too, <laughs> you son of a bitch. Everyone else um, was paying close attention. It's fine. Yeah. Wow. Well, that was fantastic. Graham Craig says, now I'm going to waste time trying it. Excellent. That's why we're here, Graham. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Good wow. Work. That was fun. Yeah, it's a good one, isn't it? That all right. So, fun. yeah, there is, a, there is a purpose of the show sometimes, mostly all the time, really. And, you know, even if that's just for a little bit, uh, this week we want to be talking about profit. This entire month is about profit. Right? Yeah, because we have the themes. Like, what was last month? Elevate. Well done. Next? Grow. No. Oh, next. Yeah. Well, next is, well, what is next? Mm. What is next? It was a bit of a shift. It's sprint, but mm. we I talked yesterday. Yeah, I think it's celebrate. Cool. Celebrate. Yeah. Cool. Just because it rhymes with elevate. I like it. Grow, elevate, profit, celebrate, grow, elevate, profit, celebrate, grow, elevate, profit, celebrate. There's a, there's a short clip for Facebook ads, right? <laughs> grow, elevate, profit, celebrate, idea. grow, yeah. elevate, profit, celebrate. I'm just a wiggle. switch between cameras. That's what happens when you have a 15-month-old. Yeah. You just sing everything. Mm -hmm. Wheels on the bus. Oh, don't start. Let's keep them going round oh, and round It just took me round. three days to get that freaking song out of my head, man. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't sing uh, it, but now we you We sang that in Thailand, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> walking to the park, walking to the park. Daddy and Oscar walking to the park. I mean, this is what you do. You just sing everything. Mm -hmm. This that's Oscar what I did do a anyway. Poo. Oscar stuff. did a poo. Daddy, clean your nappy up. Oscar did a poo. I mean, you just sing everything. Everything's a musical. Speaking of nuggets, <laughs> time to dig into the gold nugget. Yeah, thanks very much. You know, let's let's just switch gears for a sec, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Hang on. Just oh. put the hairbrake on for a sec. All right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, go the other way. No, no, no. Rise up. Oh, rise rise up. to the rise challenge. Rise to the, uh, All right. rise so to the occasion. Okay. I'm, I'm okay. very excited to, um, to have uh, Bianca <sighs> Kennedy on a webinar at the end of, um, the end of this week on Friday morning. Um, <sighs> <8 a> <laughs> oh, really? I didn't know you could even do that. Yeah. <laughs> this is just like <laughs> the wheels on Troy go round and round. Yeah. Simon and Troy. Simon and Troy, keep him. You told me to switch pod. gears. I've switched gears. Well done. What's going on? Yeah. All right. We need to know our numbers. Yeah. We need it as business owners, as people wanting to start a business, as freelancers. We need to understand what it is that's going on in our business and knowing our numbers is the best way to do that. Time, time. It would be great to have a counter for time Troy has spent doing one thing at a time. <laughs> if there was just like a little <laughs> box on the side there. Days without minutes, without seconds, without incident, without seconds, oh, seconds without, without distraction. Incident. You're kidding me. Like, we're back to zero again. Yeah. Right. So, what are some important numbers we need to know, Troy? Uh, well, you need to know. Uh, well, I think the most important number you need to know is profit. Mm -hmm. Are you making any profit? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, revenue is a good one. Yeah. Recurring revenue is also a very good one. Are there any mistakes that people make when it comes to knowing their numbers? Is there anything that they're like, yep. oh, you know, I'll just, you know, my accountant does that once a year. Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. People just focus on revenue and they don't actually factor in the costs of doing business and the mm. cost of delivering services. And so they, and they also don't, so they don't know if they're making any profit. And then when they do convince themselves they're making profit, they don't actually factor in their time or their wage. Mm. So they go, oh yeah, well the business made 20 grand profit this year, but they didn't pay themselves a wage, which basically meant you worked all year for 20 grand. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Which uh, is shit, yeah. really. <laughs> exactly. I had a call it's this morning. It's good to know though. It's better to yeah. know your numbers than to just be Correct. like, I'm not making any money right. and yeah, I don't want to know right. about I, it. I always say I don't mind skeletons in the closet as long as the lights are on. Mm. It's the skeletons in the dark that freak me out. <laughs> 
Is that a fitting? Um, Probably not, but I. Uh, <laughs> That's probably more fitting. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Uh, the problem, the mistake that a lot of people make is they don't look at. Uh, so he, here's a few problems. Here's a few mistakes sure. people make. Yep, yep. They don't look at their profit regularly. Yep. So you don't know if you're actually making any profit. Mm. And then when you do look at your profit, you haven't factored in your wage, and you haven't factored in tax, mm -hmm. either company tax or your own personal tax. Yep, absolutely. So at the end of the year, you go, well, so we did 100 grand in revenue, uh, but we spent 60 grand, so we made 40 grand profit. Well, you've worked all year for that 40 grand profit, mm -hmm. unless that 40 grand profit includes, you know, unless you've already paid your wage, which would be not very much, mm. uh, if that's all you're making. And the so, tax has to come out of that as well. And the tax has to come out of that as well. So yeah. out of 40 grand, you've actually made about, you know, 27 mm -hmm. and, uh, or 28, and uh, that you've worked all year for 28 grand. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it is better to know this stuff. Like, you don't, don't hide from this. You can get help and you can get people to, <laughs> to help to sort it out. Um, even just getting some good, like, financial um, habits in place, basically. And some, some tools that you can use to help you do that. I have one for you, of course. And this is just a, this is a pretty basic one. It's just to, like, know when it comes as a service based business to just know like when you're delivering something like what costs go into that basically so you know maybe not for your whole company don't really have a template for that but it just it's service by service like uh, especially in terms of like delivering websites let's say or um, producing like videos for clients uh, like when you get the three thousand dollars in or whatever it costs to deliver it is what it is that you're doing how much do contractors cost how much are your fixed costs that already are part of the project that you have to pay for every time that you sell this? And it's just having a simple spreadsheet so you can look at these um, uh, above and below each other and you can just compare the profit margins between your projects and just see what's working well. Graham Craig says, before WP Elevation, I overestimated profit. I didn't allow for so many costs, taxes and such, and now I realize how skinny a $3,000 website is. Yeah, 100%. Um, one Unless you can deliver about. it profitably. If well, that's right. Go down that path. Basically. One thing I want to mention here is uh, don't you should never price things based on what other people are pricing things on, mm. yeah, because yeah. you don't know. Like this was the great, <laughs> you know, when when uh, Dan Norris was yeah, running I was WP just thinking Curve that. Yeah. and he was selling website maintenance plans for fifty nine dollars a month. What people didn't realise is that Dan had built a whole team of developers in developing nations and developing economies where he could pay lower labour costs. And he had a whole system set out that he could deliver that at a profit. Right? Yeah. And then other people are going, well, yeah, I'm a web designer. I've got half a dozen clients and I'm going to offer care plans at $69 a month. And you, oh, you just, go, really just go less than Dan Norris, basically. It doesn't make any sense. Go, oh, I'll do it But, but here's the other thing. Uh, I was talking to a guy yeah. recently on a call who said every time he hires a staff member, he knows that, that they cost 400 pounds a day. Mm -hmm. That's what it costs the company to have a staff member bring a new staff member on. It's going to cost the company an additional 400 pounds a day. In, yep. Wages, office space, computers, insurance, all that kind of stuff. So you got to know how much it costs you to run the business on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And like, when you're getting started, it can be <clears throat> extremely overwhelming to try to put all this all put all of this together. So if you do it just like on a per project basis, it can be a good way to get into a good habit. So I think we have a link for the sheet if it hasn't already come up there. I think... No, we don't. There it is, over that way. Oh, no, that's not it at all. We that's need, fine. I think we need to move that light. Sure. I think we need to move it. All right, and reset the counter to zero <laughs> because there. Troy has I been I think we need to move it over there because it's always light. like bopping out of my head. Do you always think like, ding, yeah. idea. Ding. Oh, there well, it is, no ding. margins. Yeah, sorry, was that the wrong order? Profit I put that together, tracker. that's my bad. I try to blame it on Max, but it's totally my fault. Awesome, cool, there you go. There you profit go. margin so, you know, so walk, walk us through what happens in the profit margin tracker. Uh, so what happens in that is you can put in uh, like your website or whatever project that you have going on, and you can have a look. How much did you invoice? What are the hours that were actually put into this? And it will calculate based on the um, the person that you've hired for it. Mm -hmm. So it'll take a look at the time costs, mm -hmm. and then what are like hard contractor costs? So maybe they're not time based. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's like we hired this person for five hundred bucks to design this. Right. Gotcha. So it's not time based. It's that. And then yep. what are your direct costs? Yep. So what are the costs you've got? Maybe there's like a level of hosting, maybe there's a level of like you use Envision for design collaboration. So they're, they're your hard costs for the project. Mm -hmm. And then spits you out a profit and a margin at the end. I also like to put in like, when did you start and when did you finish? Just so there's visibility on that and you mm -hmm. can look back and go, mm -hmm. why, why, why did that happen? So, but this isn't including your wage, is it? As the, no. as the business owner? That's right, not gotcha. including my, my wage. Gotcha. Exactly.
Yep, Got so it. you can fill these out together, fill these out in a row and go back and do this for previous projects as, a, as an example so you can get into the habit of doing this. Yeah. Knowing your numbers is super important, but Absolutely. it is not as complicated as you think. Knowing all yep. of them is complicated, but there are only a few that, um, that are really, really important to visit regularly. So that's the nugget for this week. There you go. Awesome. Yeah. So, Good stuff. Yeah. There's um, something that we've talked about with the, the Mavericks as well. And when we're talking in Thailand, mm. um, it's something we introduced to them and we were workshop with them, which was really exciting. Mm. And you showed me some screenshots of what we're putting together mm. for them is um, is dashboards. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what were we calling it? Like flight controls or something uh, alliterative? In instrument panel. Mm. Uh, so one of, the core, one of the core beliefs that we have here is that you've got to have a digital dashboard set up in your business. Like any pilot flying a plane, you've got to know whether the plane's going up, down, left or right. Mm. Uh, so you've got to have visibility and we've got dashboards boards up in the office and we've got them on big TV screens so people can see how much it's costing us to get leads off Facebook, how many people are attending webinars, how many people are converting into paying customers, what our profit margins are. Uh, or each department in this business has what we call OKRs, objectives and key results, and we measure those, those key results on, uh, on digital dashboards. And so we're actually building digital dashboards for our Mavericks Club mm. members yeah, yeah, for awesome. improved accountability and visibility. Yeah, very exciting. And so we can help them know what their numbers are. While they may not have their Correct. finger on the pulse, we can help them get yeah, there. Right. Which brings us to some tools that help us achieve that. Get ready for Tool of the Week. I reckon they'll definitely have a tool of the week section on the age tomorrow for some photos from um, from Cup Day. I reckon. Oh my God! <laughs> Quick <Yeah>. distraction. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, tool of the week this week is uh, Clipfolio, which is a business intelligence dashboard yeah. that helps you see these numbers. Um, have you used Clipfolio? Before? I have. We're, that's what we're using to build all the Mavericks dashboards oh, well, there in Clipfolio. Go. There How is a I bit know? of a learning curve with Clipfolio. Um, but, <laughs> but it is awesome if you can get over the learning curve. Awesome. It's, it's, uh, you, you, when I first started using Clipfolio, I hated it because the learning curve, I'm, you know what I'm like. I like to spend lots of time developing ideas before I execute. <laughs> Not! I want action and results now. Yeah. I want instant gratification. So I logged in the Clipfolio and pushed three buttons and went, nah, this is broken. Yeah. Upgrade, bailed. upgrade. Yeah. Where's the upgrade? Do it for That's you. Right. Where are you, Platinum Club? Uh, but now I'm back in <laughs> Clipfolio and I spent about uh, 23 minutes figuring it out, the interface, and it's awesome. It's very powerful. Nice. I mean, and it's, it's, we're just feeding it from Google Sheets. When you start mixing data from different data sources, it can get a little bit funky. Right. Uh, but I'm still really liking it just from for getting data in Google Sheets and then displaying it on beautiful charts yeah awesome and what do you what does elevation use what do we use we use grow.com yeah. which is really expensive yeah um, you, you know it's it's oh, it's not quite an enterprise solution but it's almost an enterprise solution yeah, yeah. Um, and it's really good for doing things like pulling in data from uh, you know one data source and another data source so for example we pull data in from um, like Infusion Stripe oh. and um, Infusionsoft, mm. and then you can actually, it has a built-in spreadsheet function, so you can actually do your own spreadsheet functions, as long as you know how to use Excel and how to write spreadsheet functions. You can actually do data mashups from different data sources, and then you can build uh, build what they call metrics and dashboards based on the results in the spreadsheet. So mm. you've got the core data, which updates every five minutes or half an hour, or however often you say, and then you run your uh, spreadsheet functions and then the dashboard updates in yeah. real time. Yeah, awesome. It's very cool go. indeed. Keep yeah, your yeah. finger on the pulse. It's um, very good. And <clears throat> if you're looking for the absolute minimum solution, like most software, like Zero or Stripe or whatever, they've got dashboards built in. So start with that and pay attention to the dashboards that already exist in the tools you're already using yeah. before you go down yeah. the, the rabbit hole yeah. of a more SaaS in your life. Must say that the reporting in Zero is a bit shit. Oh, 100%. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. why we don't use it. It's you went down a rabbit hole in that for a while, uh, didn't you? Like trying to get someone to do reporting on that? Well, oh, we, well, touched we, the soft spot there. We use third party <laughs> tools like Float and Futurely for Zero because, uh, in fact, the reporting in Zero is a bit less than a bit shit. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So know your numbers, pay attention to them, keep it nice and simple and lean. Yep. And, uh, you know, speak to your, your bookkeeper and your accountant about. Getting it, getting it sorted as much as you can. So I'm really excited to have Bianca Kennedy from Know The Score Finance on the webinar on Friday, which I'm pretty sure we're going to be doing it public. Oh. So keep an ear out for this the Friday. email. Yeah, wow, Friday there you morning. Go. Super excited about it. Where that. can people go to join that webinar if uh, they're not members? That would be there. great to be able to let you guys yeah. know. And uh, keep it, if you're, on, if you're not on the WP Elevation email list, then definitely sign up. Get on it. 
get on that list. Go to wpelevation.com and look for the newsletter sign up and then you'll be notified um, when the webinar is coming up and al also when we produce blog posts and yeah. fantastic resources for yeah. the community. I don't think there's a newsletter sign up on it. I was just assuming that website. there is and there's maybe not. Brian could get this and he could no, make it. No, there's not. But if you go to wpelevation.com, uh, you can sign up for one of our webinars and then you'll be on our mailing list and we'll spam the shit out of you. I mean, we'll send you updates about what's happening with other training and bits and pieces. A bit of a Freudian slip there. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. What's on for the rest of the day, mate? Um, I'm running a, uh, I'm running an elevation session call in seven minutes. <laughs> better wrap uh, it up yep. So that's going to be fun. I love doing the elevation session calls. Um, and uh, then I'm going to have a meeting with Ben. Um, after that and then I'm going to take the afternoon off because it's a public holiday. Awesome. Well, we're looking forward to bringing you guys more training and useful resources and hopefully some entertainment as well about profit this month. Focus on knowing your numbers, uh, pay attention to that and let us know if there's anything that we can do to help. Let us know what you found useful in this uh, in this video as well, what you'd like to see more of, what you might like to see less of, and we probably won't listen to that, but that's fine. Hit the subscribe button on YouTube, hit the little bell to be notified for next time when we go live. And like us and share us on Facebook, and um, that's about it, really, isn't that's it? That is, yeah. yeah. Cool. Oh, well, we'll look forward to seeing you again next week. Until then, I'm Troy Dean. I'm Simon Kelly. Remember, knowledge is power, and silence is golden.